In our last session, Alexandru navigated a labyrinth of emotions. He confronted spirits of sadness, envy, and hatred, each a vivid embodiment of turmoil. Through wisdom and magic, he transformed their chaotic hues to serene white, signaling a profound emotional alchemy. A climactic moment unfolded as these spirits merged into an apparition of his long-lost father, unearthing deep-rooted pain. This confrontation granted Alexandru a vial of spirit essence, symbolizing newfound peace and part of the key for the next step of the journey. Finally, he stepped through a shimmering portal, arriving in a mysterious chamber where allies Tronald and Saxe awaited. Okay, Lunaria, so you've all decided that you're up next, right? Yeah, I'm going to go for it, Joe. There's literally only Saxe's abilities left now, so... So, she's gonna have to tread carefully, and if she has to use my skill set, then she has to use it. I can see you're still stressing about RAR, but we will figure it out, man. Yeah, don't be stressing, Tronald. Let's just tackle this one challenge at a time. I'm sure everything will be fine. Yeah, okay. What? Where's the grand argument where you push for her not to use Saxe's skill set, even if it means her dying in here? Or did that only apply for me? Look, I'm sorry for how I approached that last session. It probably came across as quite harsh. It's just crap. It's like I can only stand and watch as the cards fall into place. Don't worry about it, man. It's a ruthless challenge, but we will get through it together. All right, then. Lunaria, as you look around your chamber, you see that the room is bathed in a dim, ethereal light, casting long, ghostly shadows across the stone walls. In the center stand three large, ornate mirrors, each very much distinct and mysterious in its own right. Hmm. Here we go, then. All right, I want to walk up to the mirrors slowly and see if there are any indications on what needs to be done. Also, I want to figure out the differences between them. Okay, give me a perception check. That's a 14. Okay, the first mirror, framed in dark, tarnished silver, seems to pulse with a faint, otherworldly glow. As you draw closer, the air around it grows colder, and you can faintly hear the distant sound of whispered conversations like echoes of a long-forgotten council chamber. A subtle scent of old parchment and ink lingers near it, hinting at secrets and decrees from ages past. Approaching the second mirror, you notice its frame is of blackened wood, carved with twisting, serpentine patterns. The closer you get, the more you feel a sense of unease, as if the mirror itself harbors a dark, heavy secret. The glass is unusually cold to the touch, and a faint metallic scent, like that of dried blood, seems to emanate from it. In the distance, a low, sorrowful melody plays, barely audible yet unmistakably present. The third mirror, framed in what appears to be intertwining vines and leaves, exudes a more natural yet melancholic aura. The air around it is warmer, filled with the soft, nostalgic scent of a forest after rain. You can hear the gentle rustling of leaves and the distant sound of a child's laughter, bittersweet and fleeting. As you stand before these mirrors, each offers a glimpse into a world beyond, their surfaces rippling gently as if they were about to reveal their hidden depths. The sounds and scents around each mirror are subtle yet immersive, drawing you in and urging you to uncover the stories and truths they hold within. So I want to head over to the first mirror. I look into it deeply. Can I see anything? As you approach the first mirror, Lunaria, your reflection gazes back at you from within the tarnished silver frame. The surface is clear, revealing only your own image, but as you look deeper, the whispers you heard earlier grow significantly louder, surrounding you with a chorus of hushed, indistinct voices as if discussing matters of great importance. The sense of parchment and ink becomes stronger, enveloping you in an aroma that speaks of ancient libraries and hidden knowledge. Right, so nothing's happening. I try to touch it, Joe. As you reach out to touch the mirror, Lunaria, the surface reacts unexpectedly. Arcane glyphs, previously unseen, suddenly pulse into view along the frame. They emit a soft, protective glow, creating a barrier that seems to ward you from seeing or accessing what lies beyond the reflective surface. It's as if the mirror itself is challenging your understanding of the arcane. These glyphs are intricate each one a small masterpiece of magical craft. They hint at a complex warding spell, designed not just to protect, but to test the prowess of those who dare to uncover the mirror's secrets. To see if you can decipher and manipulate this warding, I'm going to need an arcana check from you. 
This will determine if your knowledge of the arcane arts is sufficient to bypass the mirror's magical defenses and reveal the mysteries it holds within. Well, this would be an ideal time for my skill set to be available, wouldn't it? Oh, and here we go again. So when you said you were sorry for trying to make me feel bad about the situation, um, you didn't really mean it, right? I never said I was sorry for making you feel bad about it. You should feel bad about it. I was saying I was sorry if I came across as too harsh. Right, well, I'm glad you've cleared that one up for me, because here I was, thinking that you actually began to value our lives as much as Rar's. I'm not sure why you'd think that. I tried my best to be extremely clear that that wasn't the case. You're just a bit of a dickhead, aren't you? What can I say? I try my best. Will you two stop clogging up the mind intercom? Look, Lunaria, so here's the deal. I'm more than capable of dealing with arcane puzzles and whatnot, just like Tronald is. But why don't you just give it a go first? And if you're struggling, you'll just have to lean on me for support. Well, that was the plan. I wouldn't just recklessly take the last skill swap thingy without exhausting my options first. You hear that, Alexandru? That's a fine bit of advice right there, you know? Just in case we ever find ourselves in a mind-consuming labyrinth again. Well, if we ever found ourselves in one of these again, I'd like to think that you wouldn't waste two of our skill sets. But hey, what do I know? Not much, clearly. I can't deal with you, man. You're worse than a toddler. And that about sums up the extent of your power, doesn't it? The ability to deal with anything up to, but not including toddlers. I'm about to toddle my fist into your fucking face in a second. Oh no, what will I ever do about being attacked by a monk who can't control his own emotions? Joe, I want to make an attack against Tronald. No, you get the fuck over there and sit down. And as for you, Tronald, just go over there and be quiet. This is not the time or place. Yeah, I don't know why you're all arguing over this. I wouldn't even want the remaining skill set anyway. I mean, it is Saxies after all. Huh? And what's wrong with my skill set? Oh, nothing. Well, you certainly said that, like there was something wrong with it. Nah, you're just reading into things too much, buddy. Now let's be quiet and let Lunaria focus. Right, well now that that's happened, I'll make my Arcana check. Ugh, so that's an eight. Okay, Lunaria, with an Arcana check of eight, the runes respond, but not in the way you hoped. They pulse violently, a clear rejection of your attempt to bypass their protective magic. The energy they emit grows more intense, creating a palpable barrier between you and the secrets of the mirror. In response to your efforts, the surface of the mirror begins to show signs of distress. Tiny cracks appear, spider webbing across the glass. It's a stark warning. The mirror is not only resisting your attempts, but is also at risk of shattering entirely if pushed too far without the proper understanding. It seems you won't have many more chances to interact with this mirror before it succumbs to the strain of the contested magic. Well, that's that then. I'm going to have to connect with Saxi, or else this is just going to break on me and I'll be trapped here forever. You're not even going to give it one more go? I mean, I don't know whether it could even last another time, if I failed again, that is. Joe, can I tell how many attempts I have at this before it breaks? It's impossible to be certain, but you get the sense that the worse the interaction, the higher the chance it has of breaking. Also, the DC for a success will be higher when you try again. Ugh. See, that doesn't sound very reassuring. What do the rest of you think? I say do it. Yeah. Connect with me, Lunaria. It's just not worth risking it. I don't know why it's taking you so long to do it. I mean, I've already said I don't need or want to play by these bullshit rules the Labyrinth is giving us. Just go for it. I'm gonna do this on my own. Don't sweat it. All right, Joe. I connect with Saxy, then I attempt to press my hand against the mirror again to break the warding. Give me another Arcana check. Okay, that's better. So that's a 16, Joe. All right then. Lunaria, as you reach out to connect with Saxi, you feel a subtle yet distinct shift in your perception. It's as if your understanding of the arcane deepens, bolstered by Saxi's insights and knowledge. This connection, though intangible, is powerful. A merging of minds that enhances your ability to comprehend and manipulate magical energies. With this newfound clarity, you approach the mirror once again. This time, as you press your hand against its surface and the reaction is markedly different. The runes that once pulsed violently in resistance now begin to glow steadily. Slowly they start to fade, one by one, as if acknowledging your rightful passage. The barrier they formed dissipates and the mirror's surface becomes clear, free of the protective glyphs that once guarded it. As the last rune on the mirror fades away, the change is immediate and dramatic. Instead of stepping forward, Lunaria, you find yourself suddenly and forcefully pulled into the mirror. It's as if the now transparent glass has transformed into a vortex, its energy gripping you with an irresistible force. 
For a moment, the world is a whirlwind of light and color, a maelstrom of magical energy that envelops you completely. You're caught in the heart of this tempest, a sensation of hurtling through time and space that is both exhilarating and disorienting. The feeling is intense, almost overwhelming. It's as if the mirror itself is transporting you across the boundaries of reality. Then, just as suddenly as it began, the sensation ceases. You open your eyes to find yourself in a vastly different setting. Gone is the chamber with the three mirrors, replaced by the grandeur of a majestic council chamber. You're standing in the center of this opulent room, surrounded by figures dressed in the regalia of high office, their faces a mix of surprise and expectancy. Whoa, okay, can I tell where I am? Who are these guys? Lunaria, as you take in your surroundings, trying to make sense of this sudden shift, I can tell you that you have been transported through space and time to a pivotal moment in history. This isn't just about where you are or who these people are. It's about who you are in this moment. You glance down at your hands, and to your surprise, you see a man's hands, strong, commanding, curiosity peaked. You look for a reflection and find one on the polished surface of the council table. Staring back at you is not your own face, but that of the Emperor of Auroros. However, you quickly realize that you're not the current Emperor Octavius. You are Emperor Valerius, a figure who you only know of through his connection to Tronald and his untimely death, which occurred within the very same week as Lord Tanavir. That's wild. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I wonder what it is that the Labyrinth actually wants you to do. Yeah. Joe, is there any way I can figure out what I'm meant to be doing here? Give me a straight intelligence check. Nice, that's a natural 20. Friggin' awesome. Okay, Lunaria, as you assume the identity of Emperor Valerius, you find yourself at the heart of a council meeting charged with an intensity that could cut through steel. The air is electric with tension, every eye in the room fixed upon you with a mixture of anticipation and apprehension. Around you sit advisors, generals, and diplomats from across realms, each holding their breath for the decision that will spill from your lips, a decision of monumental consequence. In this moment, you feel the immense weight of history pressing down upon you. The counselors await your command on a matter that will echo through the ages. You sense that your challenge here is to adhere to the script history has already written. It's a test of your knowledge of the past. Stray from the path that history has laid out, and the ramifications could be catastrophic. The responsibility to relive this moment accurately, to make decisions as Emperor Valerius truly did, lies heavily on your shoulders. Well, now I'm really glad I just went with connecting to Saxi. On my own, I wouldn't have a clue in regards to the history of this place. It's at this point a man with a hawkish gaze leans forward, his voice cutting through the tense silence. Emperor, the hour demands a decision. Lord Tanavir's fate hangs in the balance. What is your command? His eyes fix firmly on you, Lunaria, expecting a resolution. Another man standing tall and distinct in his attire, completely foreign to you, his eyes like hardened steel, interjects with a cold, hard voice. The dissemination of our arcane knowledge cannot go unpunished. Aurora stands at a precipice. Choose wisely, Emperor, or know that Arcantara will act to protect its sovereignty. It's at this point a woman dressed in an elegant blue robe with jet black hair cascading over her shoulders and icy blue eyes speaks up sharply. I agree with the Arcantarian. I say we kill Lord Tanavir and his brats and be done with it. We were fine before he came to Auroros. We will be fine long after. A man slams the table and stands up abruptly. Are we to be cowed by threats now? We are Auroros. Our sovereignty is ours to defend, not to be dictated by foreign powers. An old man steeped in wisdom interjects. Yes, we must consider how the land has improved since his arrival. Lord Tanavir's actions are clearly well-intentioned. I refuse to believe these arcane secrets belong to a nation. They are his to do with as he pleases. All right, Joe, I say to the ambassador. Why should I sentence a man to death just for immigrating? The ambassador from Arcantara's demeanor darkens as he replies with a ferocity that sends a chill down your spine. The reason we isolate ourselves from your petty squabbling continents is clear. We have ascended beyond your primitive ways, and we refuse to let our hard-earned peace be shattered by a turncoat. Lord Tanavir, once our brightest mind, is now nothing but a traitor. The knowledge he holds is sacred to Arcantara, not to be squandered or shared. His actions are an unforgivable betrayal. He and his offspring are a blight that must be eradicated. Right, so I know Tronel, sorry, Lord Tanavir died, but I haven't got a clue whether it was by the Emperor's order or not. Well, neither do I. I mean, this whole thing is new to me, and quite frankly, it's pissing me off. I had no idea this was the cause surrounding me and my family's death. I thought it was goddamn bandits. You see what I mean now, though? Clearly, this whole plot surrounding your demise was huge. I mean, it was so big you had two nations arguing over it. 
so you can hardly pin it down to weakness anymore. I just can't believe he would betray me like that. I risked everything with the hope that I could bring a brighter future, not just to Arcantara, but to all the continents. He promised me that me and my family would be safe under his rule. Well, maybe he didn't. I think that's the key here. I don't think he did. Why else would he die within the same week that you did? I think he pissed off a whole continent with the decision he made, and that's why he also died. And are you willing to stake your life on that, Lunaria? Because if you give the wrong answer, that's what's at stake here. You will be trapped here forever. Joe, is there any kind of check I can make to figure this out? Give me a straight intelligence check. Whilst there is no way of you knowing specifically, there may be something in Saxe's memories that could hint at what the decision was. So that's a 15. Lunaria, as you stand amidst this tense council, a thought strikes you, a connection to Saxe's past experiences. It dawns on you that he has encountered a description matching one of the figures present in this very meeting, Lady Alara. The realization hits with intrigue and suspicion. You recall that she was the woman who intercepted Celestia within the walls of the Mythos Citadel. Her presence here in such a crucial meeting is no mere coincidence. Oh, that bitch. Well, I think it's obvious what the answer is now then. He didn't agree to it. I mean, we know that all of Emperor Valerius's council members were massacred within a week of Lord Tanavir's death. So that could only mean she was in on it and sided with the Arcantarians. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better now, I guess. Well, it shouldn't. I mean, this just makes our whole situation even worse. If she saw you even once back in Waterdeep, then that means that she and God knows who else is after you. If she knows you're still alive, you're marked for death. And then there's the Obedus. I mean, if they're in league with each other, then by trying to find Celestia, we're walking directly into a trap. You're panicking too much, Saxy. You're smarter than I am, so just use your brain and stop freaking out. If they were in league with one another as you're suggesting, then our interaction with Vesuriel would make absolutely zero sense. For a start, he would have killed Tronald straight away, rather than saying he needed him alive and for Tronald to hate him. Yeah, that's a good point, I guess. I'm not gonna lie though, thinking about all of that hurts my head, so can we save it for a later date when we're not having to deal with all this shit as well? Yeah, let's just let Lunaria focus on her task. All right, Joe, I rise to full height, commanding the attention of everyone in the council chamber. I refuse. Make your threats if you will, follow through on them if you must, but I will not be the one to condemn an innocent man to death, a man who has been nothing but an ally and friend to our nation. You claim your arcane supremacy and dismiss us as mere peasants. But hear this and hear it well. If you dare to lay a finger on one of ours, it will be nothing short of a declaration of war, a war where hundreds of thousands will perish, blood staining both our lands. Now, I command you to leave my palace Leave my city and leave Auroros. As long as I sit upon this throne, as long as I bear the mantle of Emperor, you and your kin are not welcome here. As soon as the words leave your lips, Lunaria, the ambassador from Arcantara reacts with a sudden violent intensity. He stands up so quickly that his chair topples over with a loud crash, echoing through the council chamber. You've made your choice then. Every syllable drips with contempt as he addresses you. But you're wrong about one thing. If it came to war, it would be millions who would die, not mere thousands. And that blood, Valerius, that blood would be on your hands. You have made a very foolish choice today. You are not worthy to be emperor. And with that, in the blink of an eye, the reality within the mirror fractures, shattering like glass around you. An unseen force thrusts you backwards, pulling you out of the historical scene with a jarring intensity. As you stumble back into the chamber, you find that the mirror, once a gateway to the past, has vanished. Where it once stood, there is now only the cold stone wall of the room. Well, was I right? You get the sense that you did indeed make the correct choice. Ah, brilliant. Well, in that case, I go on and touch the next mirror then, Joe. Give me another arcana check. Okay, that's a 17, Joe. Once again, Lunaria, as you reach out to touch the second mirror, its surface ripples and you're abruptly sucked into another scene from history. You find yourself standing in what appears to be a grand, ornately decorated palace hallway. Glancing down, you're startled to see that in your hands you wield an enchanted blade, unlike any you've ever seen. The weapon is exquisitely crafted and covered with engravings eerily similar to those on the robes of the Arcantarian ambassador from the previous mirror. The magic emanating from the blade is ferocious, a clear indication that it's forged from arcane secrets exclusive to Arcantara. The shock intensifies as you notice the blade is bloodied, 
lowering your gaze, an absolutely horrifying sight meets your eyes. A child no more than 10 years old, lifeless at your feet, a victim of the blade you hold. The reality of what you've just done, or rather, what history has dictated you've done, sets in with a gut-wrenching force. Raising your head, you see before you a scene of anguish and violence. Ten figures are engaged in a struggle, using a combination of magic and physical force to restrain a man. Tears stream down the man's face in sheer agony, his expression one of unimaginable pain and betrayal. But the man is no stranger to you. It's Lord Tanavir, or as you know him, Tronald. History has already scripted this sequence, and you know with a heavy heart what you are compelled to do next. I know this is just an illusion, but it feels so wrong. Don't think about it too much. Just do it, or else it's only going to get harder and harder. I want to know why this labyrinth is only targeting things related to me. If I had to guess, it's probably scouring all of us to try to find the most difficult or emotionally consequential situations to put her in. All right then, Joe, I'm just going to do it. I step forward and plunge the blade into him. With a sense of grim inevitability, Lunaria, you step forward to fulfill the dark tableau history has set before you. Gripping the magical blade, you steal yourself and, with a decisive motion, plunge it into Lord Tanavir. The moment the blade pierces him, you feel an unsettling sensation, as if the very essence of Lord Tanavir is being torn apart. It's more than just the physical act of the blade cutting through flesh. There's an arcane force at work, a malevolent energy that seems to shred the very soul of its victim. The blade, etched with Arcanterranean magic, is not just a weapon of death, but a tool of utter annihilation, leaving no hope for any form of resurrection, not even by the most powerful of spells. As you withdraw the blade, Lord Tanavir crumples to the floor, his body lifeless in a way that speaks of finality. The hope of recovery, of any spark of life, is extinguished utterly by the blade's cursed magic. Suddenly, a scream pierces the air. The scream is so intense, so laden with pain and fury that it feels like it's tearing through the very fabric of reality itself, causing the reality around you to shatter immediately. The world of the mirror, the palace hallway, the lifeless body of Lord Tanaver all begin to crumble away in a cascade of shimmering shards. You feel yourself being pulled backward with a force that's as sudden as it is disorienting. In a whirlwind of light and sound, you're yanked from the scene, leaving the echoes of that haunting scream behind. Wow, so that's how I died then, huh? I'm just gonna say it. You were a genius in your past life, dude. Gets killed with a blade that ensures the victim can never be revived, yet you're walking the earth once more. That's a serious backup plan you had. Well, I'd love to take credit for it, but I can't really remember anything about making the whole clone backup thing. But thank the gods I did, right? Yeah. Thank the gods. Okay, well, that all felt a little too real for my liking, but let's just get this over with. I put my hand on the final mirror, attempting to break the warding on it. Okay then, give me another arcana check, Lunaria. Ugh, not great, that's a 13. Well, a 13 is just good enough. Lunaria, as you place your hand on the final mirror, bracing yourself for another plunge into history, the surface ripples and you're suddenly thrust into a scene from your own past. It's a memory, vivid and poignant, filled with the innocence of childhood. You find yourself in the moon blossom woods, a place of ethereal beauty from your early years. The trees around you glow with an azure luminescence, their light casting a gentle, otherworldly radiance on the forest floor. You're gathering starlit berries, their delicate luminescence twinkling like tiny stars in your small hands. The woods are tranquil, the air filled with the sweet scent of blooming flowers and the soft rustling of leaves. It's a scene of serene beauty, a memory untainted by the complexities of the life that awaited you beyond these woods. Suddenly, the tranquil atmosphere is pierced by a shimmering, shining rift of light that opens in front of you. It's a rift you recognize, one that marks a pivotal moment in your life. From behind you, you hear a woman's voice, warm and familiar. Lunaria, where are you, my love? It's time to come home. Ha Mother? That's my mother. I'm back in the Feywild. This is incredible. I'm being given the chance to rewrite my history. No, no you're not, Lunaria. It's a ploy, a trap, just like what happened to me. Yes, I know it's a test and I won't give in to it. Even though every part of me is aching to stay, um, gods, how much I long to remain here. To be with my mother and father again, to ease my own mind. But then I think of my real parents out there somewhere, still searching for their little girl. So I can't stay, Saxy. As much as I want to, I just can't. But before I go through that portal, I need to see her face just one more time. Lunaria, as you stand there longing to see the face behind the voice one last time, you wait with bated breath for her to emerge from the thicket. 
The voice grows closer, a familiar sound that tugs at your heartstrings. But just as you anticipate this long-awaited reunion, another sound captures your attention, an unsettling noise from behind you. You turn to see the portal, the very rift that brought you to this moment, and it's beginning to close. The edges shimmer and flicker, the light dimming as the opening narrows. The realization hits you with a pang of urgency. Your time here is running out faster than you expected. The choice between staying and leaving is being made for you by the closing portal, forcing your hand in these fleeting final moments. Fuck! Ah. Uh. I turn around to face where the voice is coming from and I begin to step backwards into the portal, hoping to catch just a glimpse of her before I'm taken away. Lunaria, in a moment of frantic decision making, you turn around to face the direction of the voice, stepping backwards towards the closing portal. As you begin to slowly step back, your eyes intently focused on the bushes where the voice is emanating from, you see a shadow moving behind them, almost coming into view. For a brief, heart-stopping moment, the long brown hair of your mother starts to edge out from behind the foliage, but just as her figure begins to materialize and you're about to see her face, the portal pulls you back. Abruptly, you're yanked away from the Fey Realm, the image of your mother just a hair's breadth from being revealed. A whirl of light and color surrounds you, disorienting and swift. And then just as suddenly as it all began, it stops. You find yourself back in the original chamber facing Saxe, the transition is jarring, leaving you with a lingering sense of what might have been. As you regain your bearings, you realize that you're clutching something tightly in your hand. It's the Crystal of Clarity. This crystal, when gazed into, reveals hidden truths and solutions to complex problems. It's an essential piece for revealing a hidden aspect or solution in the final test of the labyrinth. I was so close to her, guys. If I waited just a split second longer, I'd have seen her. No, if you waited a split second longer, you could have been trapped there forever. Yeah, I just feel so empty right now. Look, we're going to get out of this labyrinth. We're going to obtain peace for Alexandra's temple and finish whatever other bullshit we're tangled up in at the moment. And then, I promise you, we will make sure that you see your mother again. Hell, considering how powerful you are, you might not even need our help. But if you do, know this, we're going to be there for you every step of the way. All right, guys, with only Rar's challenge left to do before the climax, I think that's where we will wrap up this session. See you later, guys.